In today's video, we're going to talk about the ellipse. Now again, we don't say oval, we say ellipse. So, first let's start off with talking about how there are two types of ellipses. The horizontal and the vertical. Here's sister vertical, here's sister horizontal. So it's just which way is it stretched, vertically or horizontally. Now, you'll notice the difference in the horizontal and vertical equations is where A and B are. In the horizontal equation, A comes first, but in the vertical, B comes first. So what you need to make note of is the fact that A is always the bigger number. So if the bigger number is under the x value, that's horizontal. If the bigger number is under the y value, that's vertical. And that makes sense graphically. So let's look at where a and b are in regards to our actual ellipse. So if a is the bigger number, that means it's on the bigger line. So this section is a, while this section is b. The center is still hk. That's where we pull from the x and the y values. Now we have, since we don't have a radius because they're two different lengths, we call it the major and the minor axis. The major axis is the longer one, minor axis is the shorter one. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to find the length of this whole major axis, I need 2a. If I want the minor axis, I need 2b. Cool. Now C is needed because you have a new point called the foci. You may have looked at this in Algebra 2, but if not, it's just this special point in between the center and the outside edge. We'll look at this more in the next video when we, take, when we talk about word problems, but for now, let's just focus on finding it. So to get the foci, you need letter C. To get C, it's A squared minus B squared. What does that look like? What? Oh, did you say Pythagorean theorem? You would be correct. The only difference is it's not plus. So once you get C, that's the link from the center to the foci. And then to figure out where it is, if it's horizontal, you add it and subtract it to the X value. If it's vertical, you add it and subtract it to the Y value. Cool. Let's do some graphing. Number one. So the first thing we need to decide is, is this ellipse going to be horizontal or vertical? So when you look at where is the bigger number? So for this problem, the bigger number is under the y value. That means this will be a vertical ellipse. So let's take some notes here before we solve all these things in graph. Let's figure out what A, B, and C are. Okay, now remember, the numbers under these and the denominators are already squared. So A is the bigger number, so that comes from 25. But A is not 25, what is A gonna be? Good, five. If this is Y or B squared, that means B is three. Now to find C, we're gonna do the A squared minus the B squared. So five squared is 25 minus three squared is nine. Since that does equal C squared, I'm gonna square root it just like we do in Pythagorean theorem. 25 minus nine is 16, C is four. So let's figure out everything we need to know in order to graph. My center, pull out the x and the y value, and remember it's opposite. So negative 4, 3. My foci. So I'm going to take my center point, and I'm going to add and subtract 4 from one of these values. The way we decide which value is go back to knowing whether it's vertical or horizontal. Vertical means y value. So I'm going to add and subtract 4 to this y value. So, so I'm gonna have two points, one when I add, one when I subtract. Let's start with the add. It's vertical, so the x value stays the same. Three plus four, seven. 
do the same thing but minus 4. 3 minus 4, negative 1. Cool. Okay, major axis comes from both A's together. Minor axis comes from both B's. So if A is 5, that means the whole line is going to be 10. The minor axis, 2B. So 2 times 3, the whole line is going to be 6. Now that we know all of our information, we can graph. So first thing I'm going to plot is my center, negative 4, 3. Okay. This is a vertical ellipse. We keep going back to that because it's really important. If you forget that, you're gonna mess everything up, sis. So now my major axis, that's A, it's vertical. I'm gonna go up five and down five. Okay, minor axis, so the smaller distance goes left and right. I'm going left three and right three. and then draw your ellipse. The last thing we wanna include is the foci. We know the two points, so I'm just gonna plot them. Negative four, seven, negative four, negative one. And there's our ellipse. Hey, let's do it again. Okay, first thing we're gonna decide Horizontal or vertical? Where is the bigger number? Under x. That means horizontal. Let's solve for a, b, and c. Just makes things easier in the long run when we go ahead and do this first. Now remember, a is the bigger number. a is not 9. This is already squared. So A is three, B is two. Since three squared is nine and two squared is four. C, we have to do that formula that looks like Pythagorean theorem. So A squared minus B squared. And we are gonna take the square root because that formula gives us C squared, you know what I'm saying? So three squared is nine minus B squared is four. That gives me the square root of five. Now you can leave it like this, and when you write the foci, you can just put like plus, five, plus root of five, minus root of five, that's totally fine. Um, on any quiz or test, we're gonna give you a whole number like this, so you don't need a calculator. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that the square root of five is about 2.2, .2, just so I can get a number here, and then plot it on the graph. So my center comes from the x value and the y value. There's nothing beside the x zero, pull out the y, so that'll be negative two. This is horizontal, so I'm adding and subtracting c from which one of these? Raise your hand. The x value, good, x value is horizontal. So I'm gonna get my two foci, one where I add 2.2 .2 and one where I subtract 2.2. .2. It doesn't matter which one you do first, but I'm gonna add first. 0 plus 2.2, .2, and then leave your y. 0 minus 2.2, .2, and then leave your y. Length of the major axis, that comes from the bigger number, that's a. So 3 plus 3 is 6. Minor axis, that's 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. Let's graph a graph. Center, zero, negative two. This graph is horizontal, so your bigger number is going left and right. I'm gonna go left three and right three. And then up two, down two. Draw your ellipse. And now I'm gonna add in my foci. So about 2.2, negative 2, negative 2.2, negative 2. There's our ellipse. We have one more to practice with. Let's turn the page. Go ahead and pause the video. See if you can do this one on your own. 
When you're done, press play and we can check our answers. So go ahead, press pause. Okay, welcome back. Let's check our answers. So hopefully you looked for the bigger number first, saw that it was under Y and said, hey sis, it's vertical. You solved for A, B, and C. You got A to be five, B to be two. And then for C, you did your little formula. Five squared is 25 minus four squared, or two squared is four. And then you notice that's not a beautiful number. You could do the square root. Maybe you hopefully said that's about 4.6. <laughs> Okay, your center you said was at positive one, positive three. And since it was vertical, you added and subtracted this 4.6 to the y value. So leave x alone. 4.6 plus three is 7.6. And then your other one, leave x alone. You're adding it to the y. 3 minus 4.6 is negative 1.6. Major axis is twice the A. Minor axis is twice the B. So now all you had left to do is graph. So you said 1, 3. And then it's vertical, so you went up and down the bigger number, up and down 5. And left and right 2. Ooh, it's a skinny gal. Let's plot the foci. 7.6, negative 1.6. Did you get it right? Give yourself a high five. Good job. Okay, so that was graphing. Now let's do it backwards. Let's write the equations. So I gave you a graph, you have to figure out the formula. We're gonna do the same exact process that we did for graphing. So first we have to decide vertical or horizontal here. Well that part's easy, it's longer up and down, so it's vertical. Now let's figure out our A and our B values. So since it's vertical, that means the A value is this up and this down. Remember, not the whole thing, just half of it. So one, ooh, one, two, three. B is the shorter distance, so one, two. And now let's figure out the center. That's negative three, negative one. And that's really all you need to write the equation. You need to figure out if it's vertical or horizontal, figure out the A and the B, and figure out the center. So X comes first. X, since it's negative three, I'm gonna say plus three. Don't forget you're squared. Over something, we'll deal with that later. It's always plus. Now let's do Y, plus one. Don't forget you're squared over something, and it always equals one. Remember, you're not writing an equation unless you have an equal sign. Since it's vertical, that means the bigger number is gonna go under y, but this should be a squared, so we're not gonna write three, we're gonna write three squared, which is nine. Two is gonna come over here, two squared is four. So there is our equation. Woo do the same thing for this sister over here. So she is obviously horizontal. Let's figure out A and B. So here and here. So I'm gonna count A. One, two, three, four, five, six. B is one, two, three. And we've drawn our center at two, 
negative one. Time to write our equation. X, use the X value, negative two, always squared, plus Y, that's negative one, so it turns to positive one, squared, always equals one. It's horizontal, bigger numbers going under X. Six squared is 36, three squared is nine. Dunsies. Okay, so that is graphing and writing the equations of an ellipse. The last thing we're going to do for ellipse is completing the square just like we did for circle. However, going back to your circle page, let's find it. We wrote a circle equation, so we stopped here. Our ellipse equation has to equal 1. So when you get a number here, you're then just going to divide. So there's one more step that's different from circle. Let's give it a whirl. So same process. I'm going to put the x's together, the y's together, and put the number on the other side. I don't want to break this. Ooh, focus this. Okay, x squared minus 2x plus blank plus 6y squared plus 12y plus blank equals 23. Now, whenever you're doing this, don't forget to factor out a GCF. There's not going to be one here, but there is going to be one here. So I'm going to leave this alone. She's perfect. And now I'm going to factor out a 6 right here. So y squared plus 2y. Let's go ahead and put the plus blank down. Okay. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared, 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared, 1. Now this is where you got to be careful because I am not adding a 2 right here because this number is technically not a 2. It's a, or a one, it's a six times a one. So I'm adding one plus six. So I'm really adding seven to this side. Ask your neighbor if they get it. Okay, let's continue. So now I'm gonna factor. X, this is gonna be minus one plus, don't forget your six, that's chilling. This will be y plus 1 squared, and it's going to equal 30. If we were doing circle, we would stop here. But we're not doing circle. We're doing an ellipse. Ellipse has to equal what? You said 1. Good job. To make it equal 1, we're dividing everything by 30. So that's how we get the one right here. This is just gonna go over 30. And this one we have to simplify. Six over 30 is five. And we did it. So let's do it again. Now remember, we did this on circle, so don't forget to look for it. It'll make your life so much easier. If you notice, there's a GCF along this whole function. You can take out a four from everything. If you didn't see that, you're just gonna be dealing with bigger numbers throughout. It'll simplify in the end for you, so don't stress out if you don't notice it, but it will make your life a lot easier if you observe that there is a GCF first that you can take out. So the first thing I'm going to do is while dividing out the 4, I'm going to put my x's and my y values together while moving that 12 to the other side. Here, divide everything by 4, move it around, and move sis over here. Oh, 
Okay. Now I'm going to take out the GCF of the X's and add in my blanks. Let's complete the square, divide it by two, square it, divide it by two, square it. Two divided by two is one, one squared is one. Six divided by two is three, three squared is nine. I am not adding a 10 because this one is technically a four times one. So I'm adding a four plus nine, which is 13. Let's factor. This will be x plus 1 squared plus what multiplies to 9 adds to 6. That's a sister 3. And that's going to equal 16. We are doing an ellipse, so this side has to be 1. So I'm dividing everything by 16. Simplify where we can. 4 over 16 is over 4. Can't do anything here, so that 16 stays. And there's our one. And that completes day one of ellipse. Your homework is on the next page. It's the same stuff, just new problems. Work with a buddy. Bye.